My Lord and my God, I firmly believe that you are here, that you see me and that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence. I ask your pardon for my sins and for the grace to make this time of prayer fruitful. My Immaculate Mother, St. Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me. We proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles, but to those who are called, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. Lord Jesus, as we come to you today in our prayer, as we hear from your servant, St. Paul, in his first letter to the Corinthians, we come to an understanding that even in a moment where it seems like you are foolish or you were weak to go to the cross willingly for each one of us, where you were willing to subject yourself to torture, to abandonment, to the nails of the cross, to the spear in your side, to the crown of thorns that was forced on your head and everything else that happened to you. You were willing to go through all of that and look incredibly weak for my sake, for the sake of all of us listening and praying with you today. And yet, you are the power of God and the wisdom of God. But then, why would we just rely on you crucified as the greatest argument that we have, the greatest witness, the greatest testimony when sharing our faith? Because it's the greatest sign of your love for each one of us. It's not foolishness. You know, you knew that this was how you were going to save us, to redeem us, to buy us back from the penalties of sin. You knew that this was going to be the greatest display of your love for us. And that strength fueled by love is what kept you nailed to the cross. It allowed you to endure being scourged. It allowed you to endure having a crown of thorns forced upon your head. It allowed you to endure that long, arduous walk to Calvary while carrying part of your cross. It allowed you to be elevated for the world to see. Behold, your love for us put on display. And the strength that it took to keep you there when you could have easily taken yourself off the cross in a beautiful, miraculous way that maybe everyone would have believed in you. And so maybe that seemingly would have been the wise thing. So maybe it seems like it was foolish for you to stay there. But you want us to know just how far you were willing to go for us. Just how much you love us. And so you stay there. In strength and in the greatest exercise of wisdom, you who are the power, the strength of God and the wisdom of God. And so we proclaim Christ crucified. We proclaim you crucified to the world because it shows just how much you love me and how much you love the person who may be arguing with me. Because we can get caught up in the logical arguments, but it's hard to counter a great display of love. But people will try and they will do their best. But I think the greatest testimony is when someone bears witness to you, Lord, by displaying their love for you, by living their ordinary life, and yet everyone knows who they are, and more specifically, whose they are. But it can seem like foolishness. Why would we wear crosses and crucifixes around our necks? Why would we display a crucifix in the rooms of our houses? Why would we have a cross or a crucifix hanging from the rear view mirror of our car when we're driving? Why would we do any of these things that would boast about this most horrific event, the greatest crime ever committed, day aside? Why would we boast about that? Because you are love itself and you rescued us from sin and death. You fought the fight and won the victory on Calvary. And in this act that seems foolish, in this act that seems like you are weak, 
you are actually showing the greatest strength. You mount your cross as the king mounts his throne. You mount your cross as the priest rises into the sanctuary to offer the sacrifice. Out of great love, do we bear witness to this. We know that you are willing to suffer with us because you have suffered for us. We know and we believe that you are with us always. And so in those moments of struggle, of suffering, I can be consoled because you are there with me. In this act that seems most foolish, in this act that seems like you are showing the greatest weakness possible, where people are seemingly dominating you, you foreshadow the humility that you will show in giving us yourself in the most holy Eucharist. You show you are ju just how far you're willing to go to forgive me of my sins. You show just how much you want me to experience life eternal with you by dying for me, by suffering for me. It wasn't just enough for you to create me. But when humanity had fallen in sin, you went so far as to do all of this, even if it was just to save me, to redeem me, to buy me back from the pains of sin and death. And knowing that you did that for each and every one of us is just so incredibly moving. It brings me back to the first time I watched The Passion of the Christ, which someone I've heard describe it as not a movie, but a liturgy. And Lord, I can truly understand that in some way, because when watching it very early on, I realized I could not sit down as I was watching it. I had to be kneeling because everything that was happening was giving me a greater insight, a greater visual insight as to what happened on that day from the night that you were arrested after the Last Supper and everything that happened the next day on Good Friday. And it just rocked my world. I had never seen anything like that before. And it was so hard for me to watch as I think it should be. But it gave me a greater appreciation for all that you've done. And even though it could seem like someone could easily watch that and go, yes, that's foolish. Yes, that's a great sign of weakness. You see the love that undercuts everything and you realize that at the root of it all, that's not a stumbling block. It's actually the greatest sign for us. It's the greatest show of wisdom for us. And those statements seem contradictory. Those statements seem crazy. But if they're true, and we believe they are, then you've done all these things for me. You destroy our human wisdom. Because we would see this as foolish. You destroy our understanding of strength, of power. When submitting to authority, to human authority, and going to the cross. No one could make you do this. You chose to do this. In this greatest act of wisdom, in this greatest act of strength, in this greatest act of love for me and for everyone, you did this to show me just how much you love me. So Lord, help me to reflect on this today, to personalize it. You did this for me. You suffered this for me out of love for me so that I can be with you forever in heaven. And if it was just to save each one of us listening, then that would have been enough. Even if it was just to save one person, it would have been enough. And so you went through with it, not for just one person, but for every person. Knowing that people would choose against you, knowing that people would reject you still, you still loved in this incredibly heroic way that shows just how wise you are, that shows just how strong you are. Help me to never take this for granted. Mother Mary, you who stood by your son and suffered the most besides him at the foot of the cross, 
help me to understand in a deeper way today just how much he loves me and how I can then use that and testify to the world, boast about just how much God loves me in proclaiming Christ crucified and how I live and in how I love. I thank you, my God, for the good resolutions, inspirations, and affections which you have communicated to me in this time of prayer. I ask your help to put them into effect. My Immaculate Mother, St. Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me.